Hey, I'm Ranger Matt here at the Indiana Dunes, and I'd like to share with you some of my favorite fun facts about Dunes environment, ecology, and history. Stay to the end and I'll share with you a special secret. Do you know what spawned these dunes and its diverse ecosystem? I'll give you a hint. It was 300 feet high and moved slow. Glacially slow. That's right, over 10,000 years ago, local glaciers receded north, leaving behind rolling hills, wetlands, Lake Michigan, and the dunes ridgeline. I bet you didn't know that it was this specific ecosystem that was the birthplace of the science of ecology. That's the study of organisms and how they relate to one another and their physical surroundings. You can thank Henry Chandler Coles for that. Thanks, Henry. You can also thank environmentalist groups and individuals who helped establish this state park and national park. After a decade-long battle, Congress authorized both the Port of Indiana and the national park. Dunes, of course, are made of sand. But what's sand made out of? The sand itself is mostly made out of quartz and silica and left behind by glaciers. Its composition creates an interesting sound when you walk on it, which is why we call it singing sands. It's even been said that there are only a few other places in the world that have singing sands, like Dubai and Japan. Do you know what kind of dune this is? There are two types of dunes, four dunes and blowout dunes. Four dunes like this are close to the beach and they're covered with vegetation like this marum grass. This makes for a more stabilized dune and allows even more plant life to thrive. Blowout dunes like this are caused by intense north winds that rip the dunes apart. The loose sand in this bowl makes for a moving dune that can travel several feet per year. Blowout dunes can sometimes be the result of unapproved trails, what we call social trails, which gradually turn into bigger and bigger areas of sand. So please check your map to make sure you're on approved trails only. These old pieces of driftwood and old tree stumps are called tree graveyards by the locals. Kind of spooky, but kind of cool. I bet you don't know the name of this plant and what's so special about it. It's the fringed polygula, and it only grows on the north slope of one specific dune and nowhere else in Indiana. Its common name is Gaywing, and you can see why, as it almost looks like it can take flight. How's that for being special? Because it's an endangered species, I'm gonna keep its exact location secret. Do you know what saltation means? No, it has nothing to do with salt. It's what's happening here as the sand is being blown across the shore, eventually forming larger dunes. Like this one, Mount Tom, the tallest dune in the area at 192 feet. This may look like a desert, but it's freezing or snow covered for several months out of the year. Not exactly the ideal place for a cactus, or is it? This prickly pear cactus thrives because of that desert-like sand. For cacti to thrive, they need well-drained sandy soil and lots and lots and lots of sun. We have plenty of both here in the dunes. Orchids are some of my favorite plants, and we have more variety of them in the dunes region than in all of Hawaii. Can you hear that? That's some of the more than 370 species of birds that live or migrate through the dunes every year. This is a list of the birds that we've spotted so far. Oh, there's a yellow-bellied sapsucker. One of my favorite dunes critters are these six-lined race runners. Oh, there's one. These lizards can dart at up to 18 miles per hour. That's almost as fast as an Olympic sprinter. Shh, can you hear that? It's a red fox and I guarantee you it can hear us. She can hear a mouse scratching a leaf 150 feet away. The flora and fauna of the dunes have to survive hot summers and cold winters. One species of frog has figured out an ingenious way. The wood frog can freeze its body solid and has a special antifreeze in its body to preserve its cells during winter. I have my own reserves to get me through winter. It's called tacos. 
Do you know the hardest working animal in the dunes? It would have to be the dune beaver. We see them working on their dams every hour between dusk and dawn. I'm sure you've heard of a Venus flytrap, but have you heard of a narrow-leaved sundew or a purple pitcher plant? Try saying that five times real fast. These are killer plants that also feed on insects thanks to their clever adaptations. You can find these little meat eaters at Pinhook Bog. This purple lupin plant is special. Without it, the rare Carner Blue butterfly could not survive. Unfortunately, the Carner Blue is no longer found in this area, but this remarkably similar mimic species can still be found if you look closely enough. It's just one example of the delicate nature of dune habitats. Those are just a few of my favorite fun facts about the Indiana dunes. If you see me or any other ranger, ask us questions. We have lots more to share. We also have a nature center, ranger-led tours, and programs throughout the year. The Indiana Dunes State Park Nature Center is located right near our campsite. It's a great place to learn about the ecology and history of the area. For more tips, maps, and planning tools, get a copy of the Indiana Dunes Activities Guide. To get this guide and others, stop by the Indiana Dunes Visitor Center. It's just a couple of miles south of the Indiana Dunes State Park entrance, right off of State Road 49. You can also visit our website to view guides electronically or request a guide to be mailed to you. Go to indianadunes.com to plan your trip. Got any fun facts we didn't cover? Let us know in the comments. Oh, you're still here. You want to know that secret, don't you? Okay, here it is. This is Trail 9 at the Indiana Dunes State Park. It's my personal favorite trail, and it's considered by many to be one of the best trails in the nation. Let's just keep that between you and me, okay? See you on the trail.